Hello, folks. My name is Arun, and I am here in uh, I am here in the uh, founders' office, but I take care of the community side. So, if you folks are having any sort of doubts, you can reach out to me on the Discord community. Okay. Uh, now we will just start the session. Just a second. I'll share my screen. Perfect. I I hope, um, folks, my screen is visible. Can I? Can you please tell me? Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, folks. Today we will be having our 29th virtual meetup by Harish. Uh, he's a test lead. Okay. Uh, apart from that, hi. Just a second. A huge shout out to Browser Stack. Uh, there are exclusive sponsor for all our community events and the premier premier sponsor for um, our conferences. And I will call up on the stage Harish just a second hi Harish hey Arun you're able to hear me yeah I am able to hear you properly uh, I think your camera is off right now is it? Um, can you please do a quick check perfect Harish now I can see you properly uh, can you say something just to give it a check like if you're able to if I am able to hear you yeah Arun you're able to hear me now yeah perfect I think we are ready to go. Harish, you can give us a quick intro about yourself. You can mm -hmm. share your screen and then we are good to go. Sure. I will quickly share my screen. Perfect. All right. Um, hi, everyone. Um, this is uh, Harish here. And uh, just to give a quick introduction about myself, uh, and um, I have been in this uh, testing uh, uh, world, I would say, for like 11 plus years now. and. I started, uh, everyone actually started as a functional tester, right? So I basically started my career as a functional tester and moved into automation. And my uh, current roles are, I'm actually uh, supporting my entire uh, QA team on creating frame frameworks. And if uh, there is any uh, uh, client delivery uh, just required from an automation standpoint, I'll be the point of contact. And I uh, basically develop tools and utilities for the team. Right. So that's the quick uh, introduction about myself. And um, I'll quickly jump on to what we are actually planning for today's session. Right. So I'm going to talk about a tool which is called as uh, CodeSub.js. So this has been uh, in the, uh, I would say, in the industry for some time, but not everyone is aware about that. But recently, uh, I got more traction towards this CodeSub.js. Why? Because of that. Uh, the updates and the integrations which they have actually done uh, majorly from the AI standpoint. So uh, I felt I will just have some uh, knowledge chat on whatever I have explored from my side on code subjects. I've actually used this uh, uh, like uh, three to four years before on uh, very small utilities. But uh, now there are a lot of inter integrations which are coming into peace. And I felt I want to share some highlight features which are there as part of this tool. So that would be the uh, uh, quick agenda. So I'll be talking about uh, what is CodeSub.js and how the architecture and the core components of this uh, CodeSub.js is all about and what are the key features and uh, how it can be installed. So uh, as, as you, if you're a fresher, you might be thinking which tool to move on, what are the different uh, support you basically get, how to do the installations and stuff, right? So I feel, uh, this is this tool is actually very handy so uh, we can actually configure our framework in uh, a very limited time and we can do the setup i would say uh, in very limited time and uh, it is very easy to use as well so there are a lot of features probably i'll be talking about that in our later session so we'll see how we can basically create our test case um, uh, with uh, a very simple commands how we can generate it and what are the eye-catching features this is what i want to spend more time on uh, where i have a few demos which you'd like to share on uh, which i tried from my side and i felt it would be actually uh, helpful for you as well right so that is a quick agenda over here so to quickly start with uh, codes of js uh, it is basically and uh, uh, again it is not like a, a tool which actually it follows its own pattern it has a lot of integrations which is available outside and it simplifies the process of writing our test case so that is one eye catching feature which i really felt um, uh, if you take your traditional selenium or uh, whatever tools you take right so 
uh, when you have to declare a driver object and you need hey, to Arish, really sorry to interrupt you in between uh, uh -huh. are you sharing your screen and if the screen is there then um are you have you changed the slides yeah i've changed the slides i think um what i was seeing and all the members were seeing was basically the the presentation the first slide okay but after that you were not seeing anything no okay yeah. um, how come let me reshare again yeah you just reshare and come and check here in the end okay sure <laughs> yeah so how about now um i'll probably i think i went on to the uh, can you please put put on the yeah presenters mode mm -hmm. so now i'll move the slides whether you're able to see the movement of slides no so that is the case which which was happening okay uh, i'll do one thing i'll probably go via this mode whether that would be helpful not sure why it is not moving folks are you able to uh, see the text which is written on the presentation i am able to see that properly yes we can see the second slide perfect arish i think we can we can go with this okay sure so um, if there is any demo video probably i will uh, play sure. from that slide that would be sure. even yeah so um, to talk about the slide deck, right? Um, so I think now it is visible. Okay, cool. So about CodeJobJS, as uh, telling, right? So it is basically uh, a, a framework which is uh, which runs on Node, right? And it has its own way of uh, simplification process where the test case can be written with very uh, 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 simple text, right? So if you see one of the test case which you are able to see in front of you, where we use a component called as i and everything revolves with this i object right so you can give if i want to navigate to a page I, you can just give i am on the page and you want to click you can directly give a click so uh, from a traditional uh, automation approach this looks even easier and uh, if you go into the components level right so uh, from identification of locators and defining of elements it is very easy over here right since it basically runs on your node.js so um, what is the uh, core components, uh, uh, if you ask from a code job CS standpoint? So it has actors, steps, helpers, and plugins, right? So what are actors, uh, uh, what are uh, actions that you have to basically do it on the uh, application, right? Uh, take it, it supports your API, it supports your web, it supports your mobile as well. So uh, that revolves around your actors and steps or the actions should be performed by the actor, right? Uh, so if I want to do, uh, any verification on the application or if I want to capture a screenshot, those are steps which I basically do, right? So that will be done on the steps. Uh, it also follows a BDD. I'll be talking about that one as well. And it has helpers where it provides the uh, 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 interaction for the application. So if I want to do a REST call, I have a separate helper for that, right? If I want to generate a, a, a browser stack integration, I have a separate helper for it. So everything revolves around your helper. And it also has plugins. So to have an enhanced functionality where we can even compare screen versus screen. So that is also possible over here with the help of CodeJS, where we can use screenshot functionality over here and we can do screen level comparisons as well. Okay. So if you ask from the architecture standpoint, uh, if you see uh, it can be uh, uh, integrated with any of the tools which runs on Node, like Playwright, Puppeteer, WebDriver, IDO, also Test Cafe. So from the demo standpoint, I'll be majorly focusing on Playwright because uh, Playwright is has been a talk of uh, talk of the tool in the market, right? So everyone basically talks about Playwright. So I want to basically show how uh, the setup can be done and how we can execute the test cases via Playwright, right? And uh, from the browsers, uh, depends upon the tool which you are using. So if you are going with Playwright, we, all, we have the support for Electron Chrome, Edge and Firefox browsers. Right, and if you're going uh, with other helpers where we have the support for APM, uh, if I want to run a test cases on an Android device, we'll be able to do that. Even for iOS, we have the support with CodeJS. Everything is integrated as one piece, like uh, uh, over here. Okay, and the the eye-catching piece is on the OpenAI. Um, so we have that integration as well nowadays. 
whatever tool you take the ask from the organization is whether you have the fancy a component over there right so codejobs just recently launched this support as well where uh, you can prompt for what needs to be done on the application and uh, it generates the test cases for you uh, in the console log and you will be able to add it into your uh, script so that's how powerful it is but uh, the Disclaimer is, uh, uh, it, it is currently supporting web for now and uh, you need to expose the page details. So that is one uh, catch which we have to be very careful of. Okay. So this is from the architecture. So how the test cases are executed. We use Selenium driver, as you know, right? If I want to run a, a normal web browser or even a hybrid kind of an app where it is uh, running under a Chrome browser inside an Android device, right? we'll be able to even run that with the help of uh, our code of JS, okay? Just that we need to have that uh, appropriate uh, dependency being installed and we'll be able to execute. So from installation standpoint, if you ask me, it is very simple. The preconditions are we need to just have node installed on our machine. And if we want to run Chromium browsers, uh, we need to make sure Playwright is also installed from node. Okay, so once you basically have uh, these two preconditions satisfied, uh, you just need to uh, run this command called as npx create uh, 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 codes of JS, where it will basically create a project uh, set for you. Uh, it will not create folders as such. We have to define the folders accordingly, and uh, to basically define what are the uh, 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 feature files, not the feature files, rather what are the test cases to be executed from where the screenshots has to be captured. We have to use something called as uh, npx code codes up in it. So what it will do is it will basically initialize a project setup for you. And uh, from there, it basically asks a couple of options. It's very simple. Like uh, you want to write the test cases in uh, uh, JavaScript or TypeScript. Uh, I would prefer basically JavaScript. So you can just give Yes or no over here based upon your selection and it will basically ask where the test cases has to be located and uh, you want to support for playwright we can just give yes over here and for output it will ask you the location where it has to be saved and usually the localization language even that is also supported so we select english over here okay so i'll quickly show you how this is basically being done so that you will get an idea of it okay so I'll run the from current slide. So I'm running on a presentation mode. I'm running a video. Let me know if the video is uh, running thing. Uh, Arun, can you confirm if the video is running? Yeah, I'm not able to see the video. OK. So how about now? Can you play? Yeah. So now if you see, uh, this is basically no, the, yeah. Thanks Arun, thanks for the confirmation. I even saw that in the browser, I'm able to see the execution happen. Right. So um, what would happen over here is, uh, uh, we just need to just create a folder and once inside the folder, as I said, to initialize a project, right? We need to give npx code sub js in it and we'll be able to uh, start the project and this is where the prompts would come, right? Not the prompts, rather it lasts for the configuration. So you can just give yes or no based upon your selection where the test case has to be located. You can just give test folder. And if you just can, uh, give enter, the test cases will be fetched from there. And you see the installation uh, step stream, it will be basically showing what are the tools we have to install, whether Playwright, WebDriver, Puppeteer, or uh, rest rest for your api testing and we have apm option as well so based upon the selection we will be able to do the installation okay so once we do this see the language is also selected i want to show one test case execution that would be even more interesting now you see since it is running on playwright it we can select which browser you want now i have selected chromium and in the configuration file, right, we can set which URL we need to test. So the base URL can be defined over here. So for now, I'm not just defining, I'm just going to pass it in the test case itself. So 
And this is one important check uh, if you want to see the browser window while execution or not, because not everyone tend to uh, see want to see the execution happening, right? Even we can run the test cases in a headless mode without uh, having the UI uh, being executed in front of us. Okay. So once everything is done, uh, all the configuration will be done uh, inside this codesub.js config file. So you would be able to see the JSON generated by default. And it has, uh, now if you see, I'm just creating the test case. It will ask me what is the file name I want to create. I just gave the file name as home page. And I just created the test cases successfully. Okay, so with, with this, my project setup, everything is done. I need to just write the test cases inside this. Okay, so I'll just give a scenario name. What is a test case which I want to basically uh, execute? I'll just give verify home page. And now, as you as you know, right? So everything goes with this I object. So inside this I, it has a lot of predefined methods for us from locating an element, from doing any uh, action on a web page. So I basically start with the method called as I am on the page, where it has all these arguments. Okay, we can give the slash, we can directly give the URL, as well as we can give wherever path we want, we can define it over here. Based on this, it will basically fetch and navigate to the appropriate URL. Okay, so I just gave this URL and I'm going to just write a test case where I'm going to a google.com uh, and I'm going to do a check. You see here, uh, for a normal test case, right, what will I do if I want to do some verification? If I'm going with Selenium with TestNG, I use something called as assert or I, if I want to write with a Java, normal Java, I basically use get text of method from the website and do an assertion, right? But here it is very simple. I just use a method called as C. So in C, we have a lot of verification, right? We can basically verify the string content, which is there in the website, or we can even do a verification of a web element. Like we do, this element is displayed or this element is enabled, right? So we'll be able to do that kind of check over here with just one liner, okay? I just give, I see, and once I go to google.com, I'm just going to say, I'm going to see whether Google text is there or not, okay? So I'm just going to verify this. It's only two steps I'm going to execute. And if I run this code, let me quickly execute this. It starts my Chromium browser and the execution is completed quickly, right? So you're able to see the output generator and verify home pages passed. Now what I'll do here is uh, rather see, I'll just give Amazon. I'm going to google.com. I'm just going to verify whether Amazon kind of text is there in the web page or not. Now see by default, there is no, I didn't write any logic from my side to capture any screenshots or anything like that if there is any failure, okay? It's just two steps and you see what CodeJobs.js does for us. Once I execute the same test case where there is a failure, by default, it basically captures, it shows the test case as fail and it says what is the failure as well. And it basically captures the screenshot of the page where it has failed. Okay, there are a lot of customizations we can write on top of this, but just I'm telling you from a high level how powerful it is just with two steps, we'll be able to achieve it easily. Okay, so you know you understood the uh, now you got the gist of how this code jobs is work, right? So just running four commands, we'll be able to set up our project, and uh, based upon our application, we'll be able to uh, create our automation test cases. Okay, so all these method documentations uh, are there in their official website. So uh, there'll be four different sections. So inside website uh, testing, you'll be able to see uh, like how Selenium provides all the driver commands, right? In the similar way, they give all these uh, commands with the appropriate syntax to be used on their website, okay? So this is on the introduction part. From the catchy features, because I don't want to go more in depth because it will be more technical, I just want to give a high level idea so that uh, with this you can, when you get time probably you can explore more on this course of JS and you can see the powerfulness of it, okay? So if you ask me from the catchy feature standpoint, I would say the smart locators is one thing which I felt was really great, right? So we can basically use normal XPath CSS selectors, ID or whatever we use on our traditional automation, we can use that. And also uh, we can basically use the 
smart locators where we can say i we saw in the previous example right so i can verify a text directly by just giving a string on the web page and see whether it is displayed or not okay and this has the pattern of your scenario driven where uh, uh, if I want to write a BDD kind of script, I need to have Cucumber integration over here, right? So uh, in CodeSubJS, it is not like that. We need to basically install Jerkin as part of our package. And once that is there, we'll be able to write our BDD scripts as well uh, in the BDD style. And end of the day, if it is a BDD also, we need to write the backend logic, right? So for all the mapping step definitions, we have to make sure the appropriate uh, code is defined. I'll show you an example of that one also. And it has an interactive debugging shell. Uh, this is one piece I'm more interested to where um, this is where the EA component is also coming to the picture where I'm writing a test case. I'm um, struck in a uh, place where I want to, uh, I want an assistance from AI to define all the steps for me, right? So I'm going to say, I'm going to a flight booking kind of an application where I need to fill in all the forms or I need to complete the checkout for me, right? So rather going on each on the element and inspection, uh, I can use a method called as pass off where I can use this method to debug, uh, run the test cases in a debug mode. And uh, during the debug mode, there'll be a prompt which will be coming for me where I can uh, give a AI prompt. Based on the prompt, I'll be able to generate the uh, test cases for me, okay? So this, we'll see that one also. And we'll be able to uh, even, that's what I said, right? We'll be able to create our test cases, even page objects, I can prompt it. I'll be able to get it from the uh, 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 from the terminal based on the URL I'm basically navigated, okay? So from the locator strategies, as I said, uh, we basically have our, our own uh, locators like CSS experts are all there. But we have support for shadow DOMs as well. Uh, uh, I, I got to actually try one of the web page where shadow DOMs are there. Even that is also being supported over here. Okay. And semantic locators is what which I was talking about, where based upon the buttons or the fields or the label names, we would be able to use the semantics and we'll be able to automate as well. Okay. So I'll show you one flow where uh, again the BDD style is one piece which uh, uh, which can be used for creating your script. So it, it follows the same jerkin pattern. If you're already a user of Cucumber, you can use the same pattern over here. You can use your example table. You can use scenario outline scenario and your test case definition. I mean, uh, your test steps with given when and then, and you'll be able to uh, create your test cases over here, okay? But we have to make sure all the mapping functions are also created accordingly for the step definitions given. Okay, so how it has been done, uh, it is very simple. So I'll just run this uh, demo where if you see, I'm basically going to uh, create a test case to validate all the different locators. Okay, so I'm just going to show you from how it has been done from a normal test case standpoint and also from a BDD standpoint, how it has been done, right? So I'll just run this uh, uh, video if you can see. This is a sample test case I am returned where I am just going onto this page. Uh, this website everyone must be knowing. So the Hero U uh, app where we use all the web elements for our automation learning purpose, right? So I use a login web page where I am passing this uh, user ID and password, and I am completing a successful flow of login, and I am verifying whether the user has successfully logged in or not. Okay. So for that flow, for each of the step, I am using. Uh, uh, each one of the locator. So like ID, name, I can use a CSS selector and I can use an XPath as well, right? And see, this is another important step, as I said. In the C, we'll be able to even uh, uh, define the locator to see whether the message is appropriately coming or not, okay? Rather just giving IC of whether the validation message is coming, I can even pass the locator over here and I'll be able to get the validation message. Okay. And once we basically validate, that is really a logout button. So this I'm basically going with the semantic locators where I'm just clicking on the logout. So logout is a button based upon the buttons attribute or the HTML, it will be able to identify and it will be able to perform the action on it. Okay. So once I run this code, If you can see, I'm I, I'm just uh, adding one more step over here. Where after clicking of log, after clicking logout, right? 
uh, there will be a login screen which will be coming and just verifying whether that login screen is also coming or not. Okay. So this is one test case which I'm running over here. And the other one which I want to show is on the BDD. If you can see, I just created a, a basic uh, feature file. So all your jerking language goes with the extension of feature, right? So we just gave feature login and what are the steps which has to be defined. So for all the steps which I'm doing, I'll be giving the step definitions for that inside the same project folder itself. So you can define everything inside the codesub.js uh, config file. Okay. So if you can see for all the steps for given when and then what I'm intending to do on the application, I'm de defining the step definitions over here. So if it is I'm on the login page, I dot I'm on whatever I want to do. I fill the username with whatever string. So string is basically I pass that in double quotes in my jerking file, right? So that would be coming over here. So I'm using that for my test data purpose. So based upon whatever I use as my uh, test step uh, uh, test step definition, I can call that into my test case. Okay. So Tom Smith and super secret password is what I'm passing. So that's why I'm highlighting that string. And once I do that, I'm verifying the message as well. So I should see the flash message of test off and I'm just verifying whether that is coming successfully or not. Okay. So I just want to show you the config file, how it is defined. Now, if you can see, I can define my steps files over here. Everything comes as part of your uh, include uh, section and we can define what test case I need to uh, basically run. And one more important catches for this one uh, i'm basically going to use a mocha reporter so after execution we should be having a report generator right so that i'll be basically running with the help of mocha so we can uh, integrate with any reporter we want uh, so we have support for report portal lot you or if i want to share the report so as slack i'll be able to do that so uh, anything is possible with this uh, code set js okay so now if you can see, uh, uh, I'm basically giving the feature file location in the jerkin and steps. What is the step definition uh, I need to run that I'm defining the location out here. Okay. So once I run this entirely, so this is the test case I'm going to run. So I'll just give the command is in npx we can run coachup.js run or if i want to run it with a reporter i have to give the command as hyphen reporter what is the report i'm going to use i just need to give that command over here so based upon that i would be able to see the report getting generated so i just forward this it's a login flow it is running two times because one i am running with the normal uh, test cases way and the second I'm basically running it via your BDD pattern. So both has been executed. Now in the output, you would be able to see the HTML generated. We have two formats of HTML generated. One is JSON and the second one is basically the uh, HTML part and we'll be able to see the report generator. So there are a lot of integrations. Again, if you want to have your step logs like expected actual, you will be able to even add that inside this uh, report. Okay. So I just have merged both and I executed here. That's why both the test cases are being shown in the HTML report. So this is from uh, the locators and the style of how the test cases are created, right? So um, as I said, uh, since it uses BDD, uh, uh, if the project or the product which you're working on is right, it is on a starting phase, I would suggest if you can give a try on codes of JS, uh, you can basically define the requirements in a BDD pattern. And uh, uh, if the team which you're working on is not more into uh, automation and they want to learn automation, right? So you can basically suggest this uh, tool where they can define the step definitions for you uh, where using that, I, I showed you that right? everything revolves around with that I. With that I the object, they can basically uh, use all the predefined methods and create the logics accordingly. Okay. So this is on 
the test case piece. And the next one uh, is the interactive debugger. Um, uh, this is what I want to actually talk more on. So this piece is actually uh, very interesting where we can integrate LLMs like ChatGPT or Claudia, whatever uh, AI model you want to integrate, open AI uh, thing. So you'll be able to add it onto your uh, tool. And uh, the important catch again here is you need to have the appropriate token being configured in the project because uh, these are not uh, open source, right? So if you want to basically integrate, uh, they have support for a uh, couple of uh, uh, providers. So you can basically use uh, LLMs like now I have basically used ChatGPT. So what I have done for my project is uh, I have configured my ChatGPT uh, uh, token with this project where uh, I prompt the application uh, once the test case is executed in the debug mode. I prompt for what is needed uh, from that uh, application, right? Say if I want to generate the set of test cases uh, or the test steps, I would be able to prompt it and I'll be able to get the steps accordingly, okay? Um, even again, I'll reiterate, this has to be very careful because when we handle uh, uh, more secure applications, right? Uh, the DOM has been exposed to uh, your open AA. So we have to be very careful on the tools or, or the applications which has to be considered for testing, okay? So make sure it is uh, having all the policies and uh, stuff signed because we expose the complete uh, HTML to the uh, models and we extract the test cases from them, okay? So how we basically achieve this is uh, uh, we have to make sure we install the OpenAI package. I'm going to show the demo from OpenAI standpoint. So once the package is set, uh, we have to set the environment variable. This is the tricky piece where uh, once the uh, API code or the token is generated, we have to set it up in our project. And using that token, we would be able to communicate with the LLM model and we'll be able to get the response accordingly. Okay, like how you normally use a chat GP like chat, right? You can prompt the same way in your terminal and we'll be able to get the responses accordingly. Okay, so these are three steps which you have to take care of. Once that is done, uh, the rest of the things would be very easier. So for that, I just want to show a quick demo. Uh, what I have done here is, uh, if you see from the starting of the code, right? Uh, we need to set the uh, config file path. Uh, we need to set the environment variable correctly. This is what I said. The open API key has to be set properly. So once it is defined, we have to make sure open is also installed. And once that is done, the steps are very straightforward. So you just need to go to the application. If you can see, uh, this is a scenario I'm just executing. I'm just going to one of the checkout page where there are multiple form fields, okay? So I just want to show this page with you. So there's a checkout form where it has a lot of form fields over here, okay? And it has credit card and uh, it has a lot of form fields, okay? So you can prompt it accordingly so that it does not submit uh, it gives you the code for submitting and even not submitting. Based upon your prompts, you will be able to generate the code accordingly. Okay. Now, if you can see, uh, I'm showing the configuration file. This is another piece which you have to take care of. So what you need to do here is in your code set config.js file, you have to make sure the API key is appropriately defined. Okay. So from here only, it basically takes the variable and uh, during the execution, it goes via this token and it gives you the response accordingly. Okay. So um, if you are actually confident on this concept, just config file, right? Uh, you would be able to configure all the setup in one file itself. Say if I want to run REST API or I want to run uh, anything from the web automation, Playwright will be able to configure it, everything in this one file itself. Okay. So I'll just run this, uh, see if I'm using the model 3.5, for my prompts, okay? So now what I do here is, um, let me just forward. So again, I'm showing you what is the browser I'm targeting for, what is the test case? Uh, it is register underscore TS. So if I want to select all the underscore TS file, I just need, I'll just give star. Now I'm just uh, targeting only one file. That's why in the file I just gave the, uh, which test case I want to execute, I just gave that, okay? So now if I run this, Yeah, 
So I just added one line over here. I missed that. So I was just adding that in the video. So how I'm going to run this is I'm going to run it with the help of this debug mode, which is paused. And while running, I have to use this additional line. Okay. So npx code, but code sub js run hyphen debug hyphen ea. So that uh, it makes sure it is running on the debug mode and where pause is there, it will pause and it will basically make sure the ea integration is being happening over here. Okay. So I'll run this again. Now you see the session has started and it goes to the appropriate URL. So from here, this is an interesting piece where you see it shows all the interactive uh, shell has started and A is enabled and whatever we want, we would be, be able to prompt it over here to ask the HTML page. Uh, so what it will do, it will analyze the DOM and it will generate the appropriate script for you. Okay. So see, it is giving you ideas. Start is how to fill the fill the form fields for you. Okay. Or how to click or how to do some verifications. We can prompt it accordingly and it will give you the appropriate code to you at one shot. Okay. So now I'll just prompt something called a sub enter the form fields. Okay. So once I go to the web page, I'm just entering enter the form fields. So once I do that, it is basically processing my request. It, it will not be like your traditional normal way how you use a chat GPT, right? Once you prompt, you will be getting the response at one shot. Since it is going via your tokens, right? It will take some time to get the output. Now, if you see, it gives all the code which is required for the page at one shot. Not only the steps, it gives you from the feature level itself. So what is the feature which you have executed? What is the scenario? And on the page, what you're doing and what are the form fields, what you can do on the form fields, say whatever locators it is able to identify, it will be able to identify that and gives you the data as well. Okay. So now I just gave the prompt as enter the form fields, right? I'll refine my prompt. Now see, it is giving me all the complete code for me for that web page. Now I'll refine my prompt accordingly. Let me just forward this. So I'll just refine my prompt telling, I just want to, yeah, I'll just forward this one. So what I'll basically prompt is I'll refine my prompt telling, I want to uh, enter the form fields with valid data without submission, right? So once I do that, it gives me the appropriate code and I can copy paste that and I can put it into the, uh, whatever studio I'm using, I will be able to run the test case accordingly. Okay, so this is how the A integration of uh, uh, code sub JS, code sub JS has been handled. So uh, just we need to make sure what our model we are want to try it out. We have to install that, and the token has been set appropriately, and based upon the prompts, we'll be able to get the test scripts accordingly. Again, uh, this is the third time I'm reiterating. We have to be very careful because of the data privacy issue. So when whenever uh, we prompt something to A, right? We have to make sure uh, the policies are taken care. Okay. So the next one is on the AP automation piece. So this is again uh, was actually a great integration, I would say, uh, along with this uh, code sub JS, where if I want to have my all test cases bounded down to one piece, where I want to have web, mobile, and API running it as one project, I'll be able to handle or do it with the help of this. So uh, while installation, right, I have to select uh, uh, rest over here. So uh, in the previous video, you might have seen during installation, I might shown only playwright while installation, right? So for running any rest assure, uh, not rest assure, rest kind of services, uh, I need to basically select rest over here. And I need to, uh, I can also uh, use a predefined json assertion uh, which basically it gives which is called as json response assertion i can give yes for that okay so once you define that it is very easy for us to uh, run our api test so we can set all the variables globally uh, like our endpoint all the header parameters whatever we want all the authentication tokens can be set up in our config file and from our code sub js config file it reads during our test case execution and we'll be able to get the output
okay so from the method standpoint all the apa methods which is there it basically supports from your bearer authentic uh, uh, token and if i want to uh, pass any headers if i want to do a delete request get request patch post put all the requests uh, which is there as part of ap testing will be able to achieve it over here okay so from an ap standpoint uh, what i have done is uh, i just took one of the uh, 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 well known i would say uh, for ap testing everyone uses this booking api right so where i want to create a new booking and um, i'm we can basically pass the data in any ways i'm just uh, for now i'm just hard coding the data as a constant i'm showing to you right uh, it's purely up to us however you want you can keep the data in a, another json file you can call it or you can have any property file you can fetch it from there right so this is the api documentation where you will be able to play around with uh, the open apis right so where uh, we can create a booking, we'll be able to update, delete, right? And it has the support for having your authentication key also. So I'm basically going to use uh, an API called as create booking where I'm going to do a post request, okay? So in the post request, I need to basically pass this data because I'm creating a new entry uh, in the API, right? So I'm, I need to make sure these header data is also passed where I pass the content type and the uh, accept parameter as well. There is no authentication as such required for this API for creating. And once I create, the re response body would have all these parameters where I have first name, last name, and I have the booking ID. This is what we basically get it, right? So based upon the booking ID, we validate the response uh, uh, JSON which is received and we validate the body parameter accordingly, okay? so. This is the API I'm just going to use uh, for create a new booking and this is how I'm expecting the output as well, okay? So now what I'll do as part of my test case, um, first I'll show you the configuration. So I, if you can see, I'm defining all the endpoints over here. I'm defining uh, what is the URL I need to hit. The, uh, what, the parameter I have not defined, I'm just giving the endpoint and I'm passing the header information. So if there is any mandatory header required for it, I can pass the headers, which is content type and accept, which we saw as part of our uh, documentation. I make sure that is being passed. If there is any authentication, we can pass that one also over here, okay? So once that is done, and I'll be able to define what test I need to execute. So that is also will be defined over here, okay? So I'm just showing which is the test case I'm going to execute and this is a scenario I'm just giving, create a new booking where I just created a constant and defining all the value inside that. As I said, it can be called by any means. And for now, I'm just showing as a hard-coded value. And I'm just doing some assertions. I'm making sure the response code. This is, again, as I said, right? Uh, it has its own predefined methods, just uh, like how rest assured does, right? We can ver verify whether the response status code is 200 or not, whether it has status message, so in the similar way, we can actually do the assertion at one line or over here. We can uh, say I dot, I dot C response code is 200. And I'm just printing the status data, what our response data is coming, as well as the status message, I'm printing it over here, okay? So I'm passing the JSON and I'm uh, just taking the booking ID, whatever it is there as part of the output JSON. And I'm printing that value also so that we'll come to know that the booking has been created successfully. Okay, so as simple as that, right? With one file, we'll be able to create uh, uh, one file for configuration and the other file will be able to create a test case. And if I want to run it, so I'm just I'm just highlighting the console.log. And if I want to run it, I'll just give npx code sub js run and the booking API has been executed. That's the name I have defined. And if you can see the response I have received is 200 and all the data, if the response code is different, I'll be showing an assertion here, uh, error here itself and the booking ID also, I'll be able to generate it quickly, okay? So this is again, uh, as I said, right? All the methods and documentations is there on the website. They have actually refined the web page even more in a detailed way. So when you get time, just skim through the website, it is actually great, okay? So now we covered uh, 
uh, the web part and the API part and also the AI support, right? The next one is on uh, APM where uh, uh, they, as I said in the initial state, uh, they have support for the uh, cloud providers as well, right? Uh, if you want to run it on emulators, we'll be able to run APM 2.0 in our local and we'll be able to connect to the device and we'll be able to run the test case as well as uh, the support for cloud providers is also there where we can use uh, Sauce Labs and Browser Stack. Those are uh, leading providers which are outside the market. And also we have testing bot as well. Uh, for now, I could see these are the three cloud providers they have support for. Okay. So again, this uh, screen, why I kept this, uh, in the previous screen you would have seen during installation, we need to select REST for any uh, API related test cases. And for mobile related, I need to select APM over here. Okay. So once we uh, select, uh, it will be asking you the configuration of which uh, APM support you would be needing, whether for Android or iOS, you can select whatever you want based upon whether you're running on a Mac or a Windows machine. Uh, if you want to do iOS testing, you can just give that one. And based upon that, it will be installed. So the last piece uh, which I want to cover is on the other integrations, uh, which I felt is actually promising. Um, there are a lot of tools, again, doing this, uh, like if you take Apple tools, they do a visual kind of comparison, right? But uh, for, with the minimal support uh, with open source, if I want to do a visual kind of a testing, uh, uh, it has the integration for API tools, as well as uh, we can use a resemb uh, sorry, resemble helper uh, in your code sub JS, where uh, using this, we will be able to do uh, visual testing. So visual testing in the sense, uh, uh, I'll just give a background of how it basically works. Uh, it compares the images which has been captured from the your iteration. Say I'm executing my test case at uh, my first uh, build, right? The test case being executed, uh, each page it will be capturing as a screenshot and it has that as a baseline. So once you done uh, run a regression or re-execution of the same website, it compares the images with the uh, base version and it highlights the deviation to you, okay? So I haven't tried this in detail. I just went into the documentation. That's why I couldn't have any live demos as such as uh, running. But I felt uh, from the documentation and the integrations they have, uh, it would be promising. So I'll see if I can create a prototype and I can have some GitHub link shared on this. Okay, so the other reporters, as I said, uh, they have the support for report portal as well. Uh, if I want to uh, integrate with the uh, report portal.io, I'll be able to do that. And Jira X-Ray is also uh, as part of your other integrations piece. So that's it I have for today. I just thought I don't want to go more deep dive uh, into because we just have like one hour and I felt I, I gave a brief idea about what is this course of js and what has been brought in new into the market right so when you get time probably i would actually want you to try this one out and let me know your feedback and we can all anytime collaborate on this i'll be always available on linkedin you can uh, we can collaborate and we can see how this can be taken forward so that's it from my side team um, i'm open for questions if there are any Awesome. Thank you. Thank you very much, Harish, for the questions. Folks, you can type all the questions in the Q&A tab, OK? Uh, and we have one question, which is, will this presentation PPT will be uh, shared with the participants? I don't think so. But Harish, you are the one. Uh, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> I'll, You're ready. ready. Uh, <laughs> I'll share the code snippets as well, whatever I have shown. Probably mm -hmm. I'll uh, share the slide deck. Uh, it will be perfect. That is awesome, folks. Are you having any sort of question? You can ask that in the Q and A. Tab. We'll wait for a few minutes. One minute. I'm pretty sure members will type all the questions. Uh, we are having around eight minutes to end the session. So eight minutes. You can ask around. We can pick around. Four or five questions. No questions. If the, you, if you are not having any sort of question, you can type zero in the chat. <laughs> can you please type it? I am not having a question, so you can type zero. 
<laughs> okay. Dharmen says zero. Shank has actually shared my LinkedIn uh, profile. Oh yeah, folks, please do connect with him. Okay. Do Kindly connect with me. Uh, we can definitely uh, interact and take this forward. How this can be? Yes. Yeah. So we are having a question, which is: Is there any any way to assert DB values and put in report? Um, where can I see the question? Did I? Miss? Okay, is there any way to assert it? Uh, for now, um, I haven't seen. So we can actually use the REST services. Uh, uh, if there is any API configured, we can do it from that side. But DB support, I haven't seen that for now. Probably it will be a very good feature if they are planning to integrate. I haven't uh, seen that in their documentation for now, uh, Kishore. Yeah. Perfect. Folks, one more thing. Those who are not having any sort of doubt, they can, I mean, you folks, please fill up the feedback form. It is very important for us to know how your experience was, just to make sure that we improve all the improve all the things which we can do. And and we in general want to know like how your experience is going. Awesome. Do we have any other question? I don't think so. Okay, folks, you folks can fill up the feedback form. Okay. Just a last call for the questions, folks. And I'll just count till 10. Awesome. No issues. Do we have a question? OK, we have a question. <laughs> what language does it support for creating helper classes and functions yeah Jay. it's a good question Jay. so currently it supports javascript right and you can use typescript as well but my suggestion is you can go with javascript uh, and it it you just need to have node.js installed and uh, uh, you can use javascript to create your test cases Jay. okay thank you thank you very much harish I, I think members are not having any sort of question so thank you very much for for contributing today Okay, we'll surely meet you in the, where are you right now? In Bangalore. I'm in Bangalore and we'll meet in the conference. Ah, that is amazing. <laughs> I will surely meet you. I'll surely meet you sure. in the conference. Sure. Perfect. Thank you very much, Harish. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much and happy testing.